Yes, General Vijayan. Please, the microphone for. Thank you, Professor. Um, my question is uh, regarding the integration of the civilians and the military. Now, uh, we all know that policy formulation is the responsibility of government, whether it be defense, technology, threat assessment, or force structuring, etc. In formulating such policy, uh, it is natural to expect that the government would seek the advice of uh, the uh, respective experts in those fields. Uh, when I say experts, uh, would it be military, it could be the civil service, it could be the foreign service. And uh, further, when implementing such policy, uh, it is done through the bureaucracy. Now, uh, one of the purposes of integration is coordinating the knowledge of the civilians and the military in helping to advise government in uh, policy planning. Now, what we see in democracies is that with the change in governments, the entire gamut of staff changes over including the natural security advisors and all such people and the advice of all these people who have been in the administrative foreign service and the military for so many years uh, is uh, may or may not be taken. So uh, now how does one build a culture where human security national security, global security is given pride of place, ensuring continuity, even though governments may change. Thank you. Um, any uh, takers of the question? Uh, Professor Desai, maybe you would like to respond, and others as well. Yeah, I guess changes in the leadership, political leadership, is part and parcel of democracy. But the military, the institution of the military, the institution of the civil service will remain as they are. They provide the continuity. And I believe this is happening in India, this is happening in Japan, and this is happening in most democratic, uh, democratically controlled, civilian controlled countries. I don't think this is a problem. Uh, of course, you have eccentricities. You know, when a new leader comes in, new cabinets are, are being established, there will be changes in policy. But I think at operational level, things will continue as they were. I, I don't, I, uh, through Malaysian experience, we, uh, we could see that you know, we, we had changes in prime ministers, of, uh, even though you know, we, we, we were <coughs> under the rule of, of one single party since our independent days, but leaders change. Uh, but what we could see is that the continuity is actually provided by the civil service as well as the military. And the most important thing is that, that principle that I mentioned just now, civilian co and democratic control. The political masters, whether we like it or not, they were elected by the people. So we have to uh, stick to that principle, democratic control of the government. And, and, and sometimes, yeah, as, as military leaders, and even civil service uh, yeah, leaders of the civil service, they tend to be a bit frustrated with all this bureaucracy and the politician. But I guess that's part and parcel, and that's part of the hazards of our, our profession, being a civilian in the military. You may get heart attack, but that's, that's it. That's part and parcel of your, it's the hazard of your work. And, and, and uh, I think if we, 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 we stick to this understanding that the civilian democratic control should prevail at, at all circumstances, I think we should be able to storm whatever weather that may be caused by changes in civilian yeah. leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any uh, excuse me, uh, but my, my question was not exactly that. Uh, what I wanted to know was there is no disputing the fact that uh, uh, the political control is with the, uh, the government in power. 
what I am saying is why don't they seek the advice of the civil service and the military uh, who have continued to serve for such a long time. Sometimes this, uh, this advice is not heeded. For instance, you see it happening in, uh, in the United States. Now, recently we saw the Chief of Defense Staff of the United States resign on an issue where the government had decided to employ women in the compact zone. Uh, and uh, so uh, this is, this is, uh, this is uh, the point I'm making. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess differences will always exist. But you know, if we value the, the principle of civilian and democratic control of the government, we have to accept that. We may be right, but it's what they say, the boss is always right. And in this case, the boss are the civilian political masters who are elected by the people. I yeah. guess we have, we have to accept that, I guess. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any, other, any other questions? Uh, yes. Uh, microphone there. Good evening, sir. I am Colonel Kitsurgekanayaka. My question is, now most of the uh, civilian agencies or the good government agencies and also the extremist politicians, most of the time, they talk about military intervention in civilian affairs and also the uh, uh, militarization of uh, civilian administration. Now, when it comes to the uh, military role, Military is there to do, uh, protect the nation uh, during uh, calamities or the, uh, uh, during, uh, against internal or external threats. But when it comes to this topic itself, uh, it is a subsidiary role that we talk about. How do you say, and uh, when it comes to this uh, good government agencies and also so the uh, statement of militarization, this is not exact but it is a requirement that military has to do during the peace time. That is first. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, okay, go ahead. Yes. Uh, secondly, sir, uh, when it comes to the dignified employment of military, uh, without uh, uh, degrading the military uh, structure or the military stature, uh, now people say that uh, when uh, in certain occasions the, some of the jobs that military is employed, uh, it is not matching uh, for them to do this. It is not matching for them to do this. But uh, we also find that it is a requirement where we have to do most of the things when it comes to the uh, education or the uh, knowledge, in, um, knowledge uh, sharing and also the knowledge development and also the infrastructure development where our military could involve. Uh, so how do we uh, make arrangements and the, how, do you, how do we do that uh, it is not downgrading uh, the military stature? Thank you. Uh, can I do the answer the first question? Uh, I think uh, the most important thing is to when uh, the differences uh, that uh, the civilians feel when uh, the military is employed uh, in uh, their respective uh, uh, area or responsibility is that uh, lack of understanding of how the military works. So it is us, I believe, that, uh, uh, that to engage with them and to educate these things. And uh, uh, present day, some of the, the developed countries when they teach uh, higher uh, security uh, programs, they involve uh, uh, the leadership from the civilians uh, as well as military. That is 50-50 like to understand the, uh, how uh, uh, this uh, uh, strategy can be uh, uh, worked out uh, with military and civilians. Uh, personality is also a, a, a big factor that uh, 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 stop 